chlorine. Uh, this is great. Uh, beautifully done. After 11 years as Dean of the College of Communication, Tom Fiedler is stepping down in June. But the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist turned academic is not retiring, but rather launching the next stage of his illustrious career. I'm gonna miss being the, the election analyst yeah. on the election. <laughs> What's next for Tom Fiedler? Well, what I want to do is something that I haven't done as a journalist, and uh, certainly wasn't wasn't appropriate for me to do as a journalist. Is I, I I want to get involved in a campaign with someone who is actually a candidate running for office. I will have the opportunity after I leave here at Boston University to do something with someone who is trying to make change directly. Which candidate have you spoken with and decided to uh, be a part of their platform? Uh, well, the person I've decided to uh, help to uh, go down into the arena with is uh, Senator from New Jersey, Cory Booker. Why Cory Booker? I think he embodies all the qualities of the candidate that I'm looking for. What I was not looking for in this race was uh, to work for a candidate who I think um, has enjoyed all the privileges of being a white male. And uh, we have some very talented white men who are running for office. They don't need my help. Um, society has helped them well enough along the way. Uh, Cory Booker uh, is, he's African American. I think that that uh, uh, is the, he's, that's the future of where the country ought to be, is we're, we're a nation um, that needs us to, to uh, not just have diversity, but uh, to make diversity our strength. And I think uh, uh, that Cory Booker can move in that direction. He wants to represent people who face challenges, and he has chosen, I think, to uh, live with people like that and to fight for them. And um, he worked as a community organizer, ran for city council in Newark. Again, I think a person who's both life story and uh, I, again, I believe uh, his positions are, are uh, ones that I think would make him a good president. You mentioned the word community organizer who I think for many of us we immediately think of Barack Obama mm -hmm. um, in what ways do you believe Cory Booker will use his background as a community organizer to move forward in this election maybe in a similar capacity to Barack Obama Cory Booker brings to this campaign some experiences that uh, Barack Obama didn't have. Um, Barack Obama had, was in his first term as a U.S. Senator. He'd been in the State House in Illinois. But um, I think Cory Booker's two terms as mayor of, uh, of Newark, a major city, the largest city in New Jersey, one of the largest cities in the country, gives him an understanding of executive management, how to run a big organization and being responsible for big organizations. Uh, Barack Obama never had that experience. I think in some ways um, I would think Cory Booker would come into office with even better preparation for it than Barack Obama had. In which ways will you be individually acting in his campaign? There's uh, likely to be some uh, media relations that I could be involved in. Um, possibly also in writing, uh, you know, campaigns produce a lot of, uh, of press releases and uh, speeches and that sort of thing. I think uh, perhaps my talent as, uh, as a writer would be of some use to them. But if they want me to go around the neighborhoods and knock on doors and say vote for Cory Booker, i see if I can do that too. Obviously one highlight from your journalistic career comes from um, the fall of Gary Hart's campaign. Mm -hmm. In what ways do you think your experience on that side of the campaign will affect how you conduct yourself? Right. For Senator Booker's campaign? Well, I would tell Senator Booker not to uh, cheat on his partner, but he's <laughs> fortunately Senator Booker is a bachelor, so perhaps that won't be an issue with him. Maybe that's a good thing. But personal conduct, I think, uh, even uh, you know, e even in comparison to 1987, which was when the Gary Hart scandal broke, is so much more important because uh, now in this era of social media, the spotlight is never off. As a journalist, clearly there is a line between active participation and mm -hmm. uh, being a bystander and sort of relaying information. 
what does it feel like to be able to cross that line and now yeah. actually become a participant in politics? Yeah, it's a good question, one that I wrestled with. I think uh, two things about that. I think number one, it's um, a little bit, uh, it's unknown territory. So there's, a, uh, I think, a little bit of a, I feel a gamble in that. In some ways, being a journalist is a safe space. You're, you know, you can always claim uh, objectivity or neutrality. Uh, so I'm crossing that line. One of the hardest things to do as a journalist is to try to keep your own feelings about um, someone, either f uh, positive or negative, from actually getting to the point where it interferes with your ability to tell a, uh, a straight, very objective story. That's, uh, there's a lot of self-discipline that goes into that. Not having to worry about that, um, in some ways, I think, again, I think it feels liberating. So I'll, uh, I'll take that part. Thank you for sparing us a few minutes today, Dean Fiedler, and we look forward to seeing where you end up in the uh, Democratic primaries in 2020. Oh, well, I appreciate your interest. Thank you.